So in this episode of Viral Rewind, we're going to look at a DOS virus, since we haven't looked at one in a while. And the one we're looking at is called the Girls DOS Virus. Now, I have to crush your expectations if you're thinking you're going to see any girls showing up in this piece of malware, because there won't be. But anyway, you know, nothing better to do right now, so we're doing a DOS virus on my IBM PS1 2011 here, because on the East Coast, as anyone knows today, we're kind of getting snowed in a bit, so here we are. So anyway, I've got two variants of the girls DOS virus in the directory there. They're different sizes, but that's because, you know, one's a .com, one's a .exe, but essentially they do the same thing. There's just very slight variations in the code. So I'm going to use the first one there, which is the 6837. So do that. Uh, let's see. That's probably because I spelled it wrong, didn't I? There we go. And you might be able to hear the hard drive doing some activity. It's doing some stuff for a while, and then it should return us to the prompt here in a little bit. What's happening in the background here when we first load it is the girl's DOS virus is a direct action infector. It's not a terminate stay resident. In fact, it just finished there with the printout. And being a direct action infector, it infects .com and .exe files in the present directory that it's in the moment we run it. So unlike most DOS viruses that will terminate stay resident and infect anything that we run from there on, this is just going to infect every single .com and .exe file in the directory that it's running. So in the case of DOS2 here, all the files we see in our directory listing above there, at least some of them have all been infected with it now. So if I rerun the directory command, you should see this bytes free has gone down a ways. So let's scroll. So I think it started at like 334 or something like that, and now it's 326. So we've certainly infected quite a number of the files in there. In fact, if you were able to watch the video, you might even be able to see the individual file size changes. So, that's pretty much how the infection works. There's not a whole else lot to show there. Again, as I say, it infects all .com and .exe files in the directory that it's run in. So we're just going to move straight to its payload. And its payload has a date activation. And this actually is a musical payload. It's one of those kinds of... DOS viruses and it activates on either March 18th or October 8th. So I'm going to change this to be March 18th of this year. And then I'm just going to go and run one of the infected files like format.com. And there's a little bit of disk activity and then this happens when it comes up. So if you're not familiar with that, that is a rendition of Yesterday by the Beatles. This is what the Beatles DOS virus does as a payload on either March 18th or October 8th, whenever you run one of the files infected with this virus. It plays that over the internal speaker. And you probably noticed it returned us to the DOS prompt while it was playing in the background. That's one of the unique things, too, with this DOS virus being a musical payload, is we've seen some DOS viruses in the past that have musical payloads, but they interrupt the process of DOS there so that until the music finishes playing, you can't do anything in DOS there until it finishes. In the case of this, it actually loads it and plays it in the background, and you can still actually do your work in DOS there while the song is playing. And in fact, we can demonstrate that by running the other variant. So let me run 
the second one here and you can see the slight difference in the output that it has but overall it's the same type of DOS virus as the one we just looked at. So again it will try to infect all the .com and .exe files and then it will play the music track but it will have a little bit of different initial printout. In fact, this is trying to infect twice because it's actually got the first version infected on top of it. So it's actually doing its infection twice. The original one and that, and then of course there's our slight change printout for this variant. But overall, they're the exact same. And as you hear, it's playing the yesterday song in the background. And of course, it returned us to the prompt while still doing that second infection activity. So, again, it only infects in the present directory, so our command in the root directory here is okay, so nothing happens there. If we go to our regular uninfected DOS directory, everything there works fine. So again, it only infects what's in the present directory that you run it in, and again, it's all .com and .exe files. See if there's anything else worth looking at. No, I don't really think there is. Again, if you did get your command.com, like the command.com is infected in this directory, if that was used to boot the computer, you would then get yesterday playing every time the computer booted up. And, you might, and of course, over time, become mildly annoying. Now, is it really a destructive virus? Not really. Again, it does infect all the .com and .exe files, so if you didn't have a way to clean the virus off the machine of all those files, then yeah, you might be believing in yesterday, as the song lyrics go. So with that, that's pretty much it for the Girls DOS Virus.